record it. All right, so here's the problem, here's the situation. We have one bike rider here. He's going to be moving at a constant speed. So he's in the lead, okay, he's moving at a constant speed. We have the second place bike rider here. He's going to try to catch up and pass the first bike rider. And so the question is, how long will that take? How long, how much time will it take for him to pass? So this, let's call this up here the crossing point where they kind of cross over where he passes them, okay? And so I have some givens here. I wrote the V initial for him is 11.1. Uh, that means, and since it's a constant velocity, uh, the acceleration is zero, and so his V final is also 11.1. Now we don't know his distance, so let's just say D, delta D, we'll just simply call D. That's how far he needs to go, right, When you, to reach the cross point when they pass. All right, this guy, starts at 9.5, he does have an acceleration. Uh, we don't know his final velocity. We don't know his distance. We know a little bit about his distance. How far does this guy have to travel to cross? It's not 10 meters, because at 10 meters, this guy is still going, right? So he's gonna be way ahead of him at 10 meters. So how far does he have to go? 10 plus D, right? So 10 plus an additional D. So we'll write that as 10 plus D for this guy. All right, now ultimately it's asking for time, right? Now the one thing with time is time is the same for both, right? The time it takes for this guy to reach the cross point is the same as the time it takes for this guy to reach the cross point, okay? So we take a look, we're looking for time, and we'll notice I know one, two, three things, and I wanna know the fourth. So maybe that's just this easy, and we're spending all this time and this problem's really easy. Well, let's see if it works. So this would use V final equals V initial plus AT. 11.1 equals 11.1 plus zero times T. So what happened? So our answer is 11.1 .1 equals 11.1, .1, which is a true statement, but is not the, what we're looking for, right? So whenever that zero multiplies by t, that just, it's gonna mess us up. So this is one of those few times where it's not enough, three is not enough, okay? Um, well, do we have three over here? No, we only know two things. This one is a variable here, d as well. So what you have to do, you're in a little bit of a dilemma here. What you have to do is, since you have two pieces of givens, for each one, you can set up an equation. We can set up an equation for this. We can set up an equation for this. So we will have two equations, two unknowns. What happens when you have two equations, two unknowns? Okay, yeah, so there's lots of ways you can do it. You can substitute and solve. You can find a system of equations, whatever you want to do. So that's how we're going to approach this problem. We're going to set up two equations, two unknowns, and go from there. So let's do it for rider number one. We'll call this the leader. So you do want to choose an equation that has the two unknowns. The two unknowns is D and T. D and T are the unknowns for both. So which equation has D and T? Well, actually I think there's a couple you can choose from. I'm gonna use this one, VOT plus one half AT squared. All right, so delta D, we're just gonna call this D at this point. V initial is 11.1 .1 times T plus well, since the acceleration is zero, that just goes to zero. Okay, so D equals 11.1 T. So those are our two unknowns. That's our first equation here. We're gonna do the same thing with second place guy. And I'm gonna just use the same equation. And we're going to go ahead and substitute the givens from him. So his delta D is going to be 10 plus D. His V initial is 9.5 times T plus 
one half his acceleration was 1.2 and we'll call this t squared so that's our second equation all right the easiest way at this point really is just to substitute that d right into here that first equation so we're going to get 10 plus 11.1t equals the rest, 9.5t plus, let's just do the math here, 0.6t squared. Okay, we're going to rearrange this. So some of you might be thinking ahead, this is going to be a problem here because how do we solve something like this? Quadratic, right, so you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. You guys remember that? You learned back in eighth grade. You thought, when would I ever need this in real life? AP Physics, that's when you need it. So we're going to go ahead and rearrange this. So uh, let's go with 0.6t squared. Uh, subtract that, so that's going to give us uh, plus a negative, what's that, 1.6t plus negative 10. So that's your A, that's your B, that's your C. You guys remember the quadratic equation? Mm -hmm. A to B plus minus square root something, something, something. B squared, B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I'm sure your eighth grade teacher made you memorize that, right? Probably sang a song or something like that. Okay, so you go ahead and do it. We're really running out of time, so let's just throw down the number. Someone have it in their calculator already? 5 point what? Yeah. Negative 2 point something. So you always get two solutions, right? Well, in physics, they're not both right. Which one's wrong? Negative. Negative, okay? So you always want to use the positive value. Anyone confirm this number before I shut off the video? All right, let's hope it's right. <laughs>